you know, people buy products to get a job done. Now, when we talk about that job, we're referring to the job of this job executor here, right? So there's a group of people getting a, a job done, right? And what we want to know is who is that group of people and what is their core functional job, right? And then once we understand the job, we can look at all the job steps. We can look at all the outcomes associated with that, more like in that hierarchy I just described. What we also know is that these job executors might be getting other jobs done, either before or during or after um, getting the core job done. So we call these related jobs. You can also think of them as adjacent markets because they're other jobs that the same group of people are trying to get done. And then the job executor also has uh, emotional jobs that they might be trying to get done as well. So these are the key considerations from that standpoint. But what's missing from this is incorporating the rest of the model here. And this is where a lot of confusion often takes place because uh, people are buying a product to get a job done. That's true. But there's other customers that the development team has to satisfy in order to create a successful product. So we call those um, the consumption chain jobs. And they include things like, you know, installing the product or setting it up or learning how to use it or storing it, maintaining it and upgrading it. And with each of those jobs, there's job steps and outcomes associated with each of those as well. A lot of people view this more as like the customer experience in terms of what the customer is trying to do with the product from beginning to end, from purchasing it to disposing of it. Now, it's true that these are jobs, but we're not defining the market around a consumption chain job. We define the market around the job executor, right? People buy products to get this job done, the core functional job, and then people have to support it along the way. And um, I think the other piece is the purchase decision maker. Um, you know, we call out the purchase decision maker separate because they have a financial job that they're trying to get done and their outcomes uh, may be very different than the outcomes of the core job executor. In many markets we work in, especially B2B, for example, uh, the purchase decision maker and the job executor are two different people. Um, the purchase decision maker may never even use the product. So they, they are not qualified to uh, talk about the needs of the job executor because they're not the job executor. So, um, you know, thinking through all these as pieces, um, um, pieces of the puzzle, I think makes pretty good sense. Um, you know, and there's been different variations of jobs theory that comes into play. Like you said, uh, we see one that focuses, let me just reset this, one that mainly focuses on the purchase. So you study a, uh, a purchase of a product. You talk to uh, people buying products and figure out, well, why are they buying it? So, but you're really studying the purchasing process, not the job the customer is trying to get done, which is this job up here. So I see that happen quite a bit. And then um, I also see people talking the, to the purchase decision maker about their financial job and their financial outcomes. And they're just conflating, like who's the real customer, right? So breaking it out into these three customer types, having these types of inputs and so on, uh, we call this the jobs we done needs framework. Uh, you know, I think it does a pretty good job of just explaining where all the pieces fit so that you can start analyzing, um, analyzing the right things.